On today's World Insight with Xin Wei, Asian leaders gathered in Tajikistan for the CICA Security Conference. What's on the security agenda? And a Chinese Vice Premier to co-host the 10th China-UK Economic and Financial Dialogue. How are ties with Britain amid a change in Prime Minister? And welcome to World Inside with me, Tianwei. The program is coming to you on CGTN. Chinese President Xi Jinping has wrapped up his visit to Central Asia over the weekend. He first went to Kyrgyzstan for his year's Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit, where he called on the SEO to set an example of a community with a shared future. Then he traveled to Tajikistan for the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, or SICA. What are the new challenges and opportunities for security cooperation in Asia? Before our discussion, take a look at this first. Chinese President Xi Jinping wrapped up his five-day Central Asia tour on Sunday, which included two state visits and two summits, along with several bilateral and trilateral meetings. President Xi said Asia was one of the most dynamic and promising regions in the world. Despite some common challenges such as scarce political trust and economic tensions, Asian countries should work together to make the continent a safer and better place to live. We should abandon zero-sum games and protectionism, strengthen communication in policies, enhance political mutual trust, and gradually expand political consensus. Both summits did serve as platforms for multilateral dialogue and consultations. The SEO and CICA could be effective in building cooperation in security, stability and sustainable development among Eurasian and Asia-Pacific countries in today's turbulent world. China always maintains good relations with Asian countries and has participated in the establishment of multilateral mechanisms such as SICA, SEO, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. It has also made contributions to Asian stability and prosperity. Looking ahead, she said China was willing to go full steam with its massive international project, the Belt and Road Initiative, to create more viable opportunities for itself and other partners. The Chinese leader said China had always been a strong supporter of peace and stability in Asia and around the world. And China was willing to share its experiences with Asian neighbors to step up regional security, to spur economic growth, and to build a community of common destiny for mankind. For more on SCO and CICO, all of these abbreviations, of course, we're going to explain that. Joining us in Istanbul, uh, Serkan Ola, who is a political analyst and a writer and Central Asian geopolitical commentator. In New Delhi, we have Deepankar Banerjee, former director and head of the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies. And in our Beijing studio, Ruo Yongkuan, associate research fellow from the China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. Mr. Aro, help us to understand why would all of these leaders so eager to attend some of the conferences and summits, as we mentioned earlier, why do they really matter? Um, this will be an historical uh, chance uh, for the leaders who are attending the uh, SICA uh, meeting summit. Uh, mm -hmm. There will be a chance for putting uh, uh, global uh, uh, economical system and also the currency system and also a uh, chance for the peace for the region. Mm. Uh, especially uh, we are uh, observing uh, the uh, restriction of the uh, new world order and also international economical system. So uh, U.S. is uh, focused on its own uh, uh, issues and uh, uh, putting uh, pressure on the other countries who are not uh, on the same line with U.S. administration. Mm. Uh, but the principles and the mechanism of the international system uh, is uh, belonging to the decades before. So there should be a change and the leaders has a chance 
now to uh, make a uh, special uh, uh, standing against uh, the uh, rogue tweets uh, of uh, Trump administration. <laughs> what you have just said, uh, Mr. Ola, seems to be reminding some people of a possibility. Is China trying to build its own so-called uh, territory of power, excluding the United States? Mrs. Benerjee, what is your take? Yes. Uh, we are living in extraordinary times. As uh, my predecessor just mentioned, there's a change, the imagine change in the world order. Power balance is moving, moving from this side to that side. There's shift in adjustment of uh, roles of media powers. And hence, I think these two conferences, first the SICA, and now immediately after that is a Shanghai Cooperation Op Organizations Conference, summit meetings, both become extraordinarily important. Now we are seeing currently instability in the Middle East as well as in the, the uh, uh, Persian Gulf. Uh, the current developments that is happening around the place are cause of considerable concern. Mm. And I think at this important moment for heads of governments and senior people on strategic and uh, other issues to meet now to discuss these questions mm. uh, become very important. I see. But Mr. Luo, uh, hasn't the current the administration in the U.S. Uh, been talking about the so-called Indo-Pacific? That seems to be an order of the world in their eyes, even though the interpretation of that is still up to different people. Uh, what is China and the other countries for SEO, CICA, trying to figure out the so-called the order of the region or the order of the world. Uh, in my opinion, the SCO and the CICA are very important for China because we are focusing on the how to rebuild the regional architecture. And not just now we mentioned the Indo-Pacific strategy or the anti-globalization treaty or so on and so forth. So for us, we, we are very important to support, to, to promote the multilateral cooperation. So I think SCO and CICA give us a platform to discuss the regional and international issues that we are concerned and we will find the solutions for the international and the regional issues. That's very important for us to strengthen the mutual understanding, the mutual but, but, confidence. But, but, but exactly what kind of solutions are we talking about? Are these just talk shops as many people, uh, if you read the international press coverage of these conferences before, some were describing it as a talk shop. So others say, wow, there is a lot of political ambition inside it. So exactly what is it and what are the solutions? Do we see any specific ones? Mr. Benerjee. Yes. Now, the SICA idea really originated from Kazakhstan. It was the late President Nusultan Nazarbayev who uh, began to give, uh, put this idea forward in 1992. And the situation then was the emerging developments in the Central Asian Republics, their relationship with Asia as well as with Europe, and that's where the idea originated. And it has become even more important today with the current developments, as you mentioned, in the Indo-Pacific region, as well as, I think, more important, at the Eurasian region, the difficulties and the uncertainties that are c taking place at this moment, it becomes very important that the organization like the SICA, which is essentially a confidence building arrangement to anticipate and counter the possibilities of conflict in the region. This becomes very important. Mm. And the role of major powers in Asia, like China, Russia, India and others, become very relevant. Right. You know, we could have this mechanism, that mechanism, this summit, that conference. The question really is, have these mechanisms, <laughs> have these summits yes, really solved yes. some of the problems that we're yes. facing right now? Mr. Oral, uh, if you could uh, put your insights here, uh, what have they solved so far? What are the aspirations this time to solve any specific questions? Are we going to see the delivery of the solutions? in recent days, months, if not years, Mr. Allah. 
the, the American interests are different than uh, uh, the, the, the secure country's interests. That is the main difference. Uh, uh, the uh, economical uh, trade or trade war or new Cold War are the sentences uh, formed by the U.S. policies. Uh, China, Russia, India, and even uh, Turkey as a NATO member are coming together against these threats and policies. So if you see the structure of uh, SICA, then we can find a chance to see that the NATO, EU, World Bank, or United Nations are the old-fashioned organizations at not giving the same uh, answers to the needs. So there is a good chance just shaping and showing that the multi-power world mm. is now uh, standing on if the other one, I mean the other old power as U.S. Uh, wants to be part of this the new world shaped in a justice and peaceful way, then welcome. But well, it seems it's not easy. But Mr. Luo in Beijing, you have to deliver in order to earn credibility. So have all these mechanisms been delivering results? And when we talk about the Eurasian region, as Mr. Banerjee mentioned earlier, this is a very vibrant region. You got a, a Eurasian economic community, which is proposed by Russia going on right now. You also have the Belt and Road Initiative, China and others trying to build. But the thing is, what can this mechanism and others deliver? And how much have been really delivered besides discussions? I think the most important thing is to we sit down to talk with each other to identify which concern, <coughs> which field we need to more cooperate. To China, what are the fields? I think that for China, the most important thing is we need to build the community with a shared future. In other words, we will find that we will resolve our disputes by negotiations, in, <coughs> in which we means that we discuss our alignment of the Belt and Road and, and the development strategy of the from Central countries, Central Asia countries, and also Southeast Asian countries. No, 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 Mr. Luo, that sounds very abstract. You, you can be a little bit specific. For those who do not know every story going on among the countries in the region, which is very difficult for people from outside the region to understand, what exactly are some of the difficulties of lining up some of the best interests of all countries and be able to come to consensus. Give us one or two examples if you can, Mr. Law. For example, we can see the terrorism, now, not, uh, not only the SCO but, but also the CICA. I think we can find the, the solutions to fighting against the terrorism because the terrorism is the common concern in the region. What kind of terrorism are you talking about and who are the players to fight the terrorism? It's too general in your answer. Can you be more specific, Mr. Law, yeah, once again? Because, uh, under the framework of CO, we have established the, uh, the regional framework to again to discuss the terrorism issue yes. first. The second, then we we have the annual exercises or the training to fight against terrorism. And also with the CSA member states, not only multilaterally but bilaterally speaking, we have the bilateral cooperation. For example, China and some Thailand and, and then, then Cambodia, mm. we have the bilateral cooperation against the, the terrorism. So in my opinion, for the SCO and the CSA, the important thing is we have the we find a pla platform to discuss bilaterally or multilaterally to discuss and f to identify the terrorism or the other issues like the poverty, the starvation, the non-traditional issues that we must uh, focus on. That's, that's, the, the, that's the focus. That's the, that is we must push forward. Uh, discuss, discuss, and discuss. That's the uh, only verb I heard uh, from Mr. Luo. So Mr. Banerjee, uh, some people ask about the question, <laughs> what about delivery? Absolutely. Well, that is a fundamental question. But however, one must accept that given the changing circumstances and the emerging developments in the world, possibilities of the shift in global order, lack of, comp uh, lack of cooperation, there will be multiple organizations trying to address these issues. Mm. Now, there will be a certain amount of overlap between the SICA and the SCO. We must accept it. These are initial stages. Not very much has happened for stability and cooperation within either the SICA or constructive engagements under the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. I see over a period of time that there will be a rationalization of responsibilities 
and activities. Mm. But as of now, I see the seeker addressing fundamentally questions of uh, confidence building between nations, especially in a disturbed area, particularly in the Eurasian region. And the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, looking after the broader... The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is the largest regional organization in the world. It includes the maximum number of population, yeah. well over half the world, with major countries involved. If they can cooperate and lay down norms, regulations, methods of interaction, and avoid conflicts such as trade wars, sanctions, yes. unnecessary interventions. And of course, as was mentioned by my friend from Turkey, the overwhelming question facing the region uh, in the Eurasia, Asia Pacific and elsewhere mm -hmm. is uh, the question of terrorism. Okay. Unless we can address effectively the question of terrorism in the world, we will not have succeeded. Mr. O'Hall, I guess the same question to you, a big ambitions of these organizations but delivery very important because right now the world is changing very fast if organization does not function to the extent of delivery they will become immediately irrelevant even if there is big political determination to work together so uh, mr alhala what do you think is the starting point are we seeing any potential for a starting point to resolve some of the biggest issues that you all lined up. Uh, uh, Sika, uh, specially needs to establish the military political agenda. Mm. The uh, terrorist organizations uh, are getting bigger uh, with the two routes. First, the poor income and the second, the international support. Think that the Daesh is shit in Iraq or Syria. Are they taking to Asia? Then what will happen in Asia? The uh, terrorist uh, organizations are uh, are they supporting uh, uh, by the Western countries who are uh, against the uh, growing of uh, the uh, uh, economies of the Asia countries? Uh, let's uh, see the important point uh, uh, from this side. So uh, your terrorist or my terrorist good? There is no question like that. Uh, first, Sika um, should stand against. Uh, this terrorism mm. uh, uh, issues and find the path to act uh, against this and the military political agenda and create a uh, cultural uh, similar uh, 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 area and use an effective mechanism of dialogue that is important uh, the uh, Belt and Road uh, initiative is the main economical growth uh, movement for the Asia countries uh -huh. even from Beijing to Istanbul, Istanbul to London. So uh, the new world order uh, will be shaped uh, maybe not so quickly in the 21st century, uh -huh. but uh, the road route will be uh, powerful and uh, live long. Which I've just said, a very extremely important point. Uh, Mr. Luo, that is, we all are aware, now we are in a new version of globalization. It's not the traditional global supply chain anymore, but rather, uh, where do we go from here with new player becoming more significant Absolutely. on the international stage? But the question really is, even if with mechanism like this, do people really just brainstorm? Uh, or they are brainstorming and they're also acting according to the thoughts they are brainstorming about. That is the issue here. I mean, on the one hand, we could complain, you know, why the rest of the world is not accepting the emerging of emerging economies, developing countries, even though they are becoming so big in global GDP and pushing for the economic leap forward of the world. But on the other hand, we are still doing things as normal. So that is the thing that we are facing right now. So will SEO, will SICA, those are very important occasions to test the credibilities of these organizations. Mr. Luo. One thing that we, that many countries accept, that is, I give you an example, that is the new concept of Asian security. Mm. That China proposed many years ago. What does that mean? 
Is it an abstract concept? What does it mean to the others? Yeah, I give you an example. It means that we must propose the, the common, sustainable, and comprehensive security view. So that is adopted by China and ASEAN countries. Mm. For example, China and ASEAN countries now we discuss and propose the COC, Code of Conduct in South China Sea. Right. That is. The, 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 that shows that China and ASEAN countries we discuss and push forward the common, sustainable, and the comprehensive security concept. That mm. is very important. So I think against this background, if we sit down and discuss, that's most important. Then we fight against each other. Mm. Let's have a right pop yes. right now, Mr. O'Hala. We're running out of time. Would you like to also say a few words before we wrap up this round of discussion? Uh, that can show that uh, this is the multi-power world now. And also, um, I can say that for the Asia, in the future, when Dushanbe becomes a Zurich city, peace will be stabilized, uh, I think. So uh, both economical, economical uh, values, the economical growth policies, dialogue, mm -hmm. and uh, political military uh, constitutions uh, should uh, uh, show the real uh, 21st century as a hope to the whole world. I see. Sarkan Orao, also Deepak Banerjee, uh, Luo Yongkun, thank you so much, gentlemen, helping us to understand what's behind all of these abbreviations, SCO and SICA, whether they are mechanisms really likely to deliver on some of the critical issues for the region. Really appreciate, gentlemen, for being with us.